You have probably told one big lie about home EV chargers, that the box on your wall is the thing charging your car. It is not. The real charger is already inside your car, and that little home unit is basically a smart power switch with good marketing. And once you understand that, a lot of other things suddenly make sense. Why some people waste thousands on an overkill hardware they never use? Why your neighbor with a slow charger has a healthier battery than the guy who brags about the max power? And why the most important part of your home charging setup is not the charger, it is your habits? In this video, we are going to break down what a home charger actually does, how fast you really need, and what is safe, what is a waste of money, and how all of these affect your battery's life and your powerable in real life, not just on paper. By the end, you'll know enough to decide if you should stick with the cheap option, upgrade your panel, or stop stressing about kilowatts and fix your charging routine instead. Hello everyone, I'm Shayan, an engineer specialized in electric vehicle development. Let us start at the core. When you buy an EV, the real charger is inside the car. That is the onboard charge. With AC charging at home, your wall box is not pumping DC straight into the battery. It is simply giving your car AC power at a certain voltage and a certain maximum current. The onboard charger then converts that AC into DC for the battery. So what does the box on the wall actually do? It talks to the car and says something like this. Here is the voltage available. Here is the voltage available. Here is the maximum current you are allowed to pull. Here's the safety ground. Here's how you start and stop. That's it. No battery magic, no secret range upgrade. It is a controlled power outlet with an extra safety checks. Once you see it that way, a lot of marketing starts to look different. 11 kilowatts, 22 kilowatts, smart, super smart, ultra, pro. Underneath all the labels, it is contactors, some electronics to speak the charging language, and sometimes a bit of software to schedule or meter energy. The big limit is almost never the wall box. It is your car and your electrical panel. How fast do you actually need to charge? Here is where people overbuy like crazy. Most EV owners don't empty their battery every day. Let us say you drive 60 kilometers in a day. Your car uses roughly 18 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That is about 11 kilowatt hours used that day. Now imagine you have a simple 11 kilowatt charger at home. 7 kilowatts means 7 kilowatt hours added per hour of charging. To refill 11 kilowatt hours, you need roughly 1 hour and 30 40 minutes. No 10 hours, not all night. That is the shocking part for a lot of new owners. Even a slower 3.6 kilowatt unit can easily refill that in an evening if you plug in when you win, when you get home and leave it until night. So why do people insist they need 11 kilowatt or more? Because the car screen shows a big number and it feels like more is always better. Because salespeople push the biggest spec. Because the internet loves extremes. In reality, for most daily use, Anything between 3.6 and 7 kW is plenty. 11 kW is nice if you drive a lot or share the charger between two cars, but it is not mandatory for battery health or convenience. And no, more power at home AC doesn't magically cure your pack. Your onboard charger and BMS decide what is safe, as long as you stay inside what car is built for. The real killer is not 7 versus 11. It is how often you live at 100% and how hot the packs get. The real bottleneck is your panel, not your charger. The next truth that stings a bit, your house might not be ready for the charger you think you want. A big home charger on a high power setting needs a dedicated circuit with a certain breaker size and wire gauge. If you live in an older house with a smaller main panel, you may not have enough spare capacity to add a fat constant load without upgrades. Many people call an installer, ask for the biggest charger, then get hit with a massive quote because the panel needs an upgrade. The cable run is long or the utility has limits. Here's the part nobody explains clearly. In a lot of homes, installing a smaller charger or even just using a lower current setting solves everything without a panel upgrade. If your main panel is tight but you charge at night when almost nothing else is on, a smart load management system or a lower current limit can keep you under the line. For example, 
instead of trying to run 11 kilowatts constantly, you limit the charger to 5 or 6 kilowatts and it still refills your daily use with room to spare. The question is not what is the maximum my charger can do. The real question is how much do I actually need overnight? And how much can my panel safely provide without tripping or overheating? That is the shocking truth for a lot of people who thought they need a monster unit. Smart versus dumb chargers and what actually matter. Now let us talk about the smart charger trend. You see units with apps, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, dynamic load management, solar integration. On the other hand, you have simple units that just provide power when you plug in. Do you need a smart charger? Sometimes yes. If your utility has variable rates and you need to hit a cheap window automatically, a smart charger that can schedule and respond to prices changes is useful. If you have rooftop solar and want to use only excess solar when the sun is strong, smart controls help. If you share the charger across multiple tenants or want to build usage, metering and access control makes sense. But you know what many people do? They buy the smart unit, never open the app, never change the default settings, and plug in randomly. They end up charging in peak price hours because it is convenient and the fancy features sit unused. Meanwhile, a simple charger plus the schedule function built into the car would have solved everything. Your car can usually set start and stop times, it can delay charging until off-peak, it can limit current. In other words, the smartest part of the system is already parked in your driveway. So before you spend extra on intelligence in the wall box, ask yourself, am I actually going to use dynamic pricing and app control every week? Or will I plug in once a day and forget about it? If you're the set and forget type, the shocking truth is that a basic, safe, well-installed charger paired with the car schedule is enough. Another area full of confusion is safety. You have probably heard dramatic warnings. Do not use a normal socket or your house will burn down. Every charger must be top of the line or you are risking your life. The reality is more boring but more useful. A regular household outlet can technically charge an EV on low power for short terms, but it was never designed to run near its limits for 8 or 10 hours every night. Contacts can get warm, old wiring can have issues, and cheap extensions cords are a disaster. That is why for long-term daily charging, a dedicated circuit and a proper EV charger or dedicated outlet is not overkill. It is common sense. The biggest safety factors are not the brand logos. Their installation quality, correct breaker size, proper cabling, and protection devices like residual current detection. A mid-range unit installed by a competent electrician on the right circuit is safer than an expensive charger slapped on the wall with questionable wiring. Also your car and charger constantly talk before and during charging. If something is really wrong, the handshake fails and charging simply doesn't start. That is why you see errors instead of instant sparks when there is a mismatch. The shock value headline might be that home chargers are dangerous. The, the truth is that when installed correctly, they are mundane and boring. The danger comes from cutting corners, not from the basic technology. Does faster home charging hurt your battery pack? This is the part that everyone argues about. People hear that DC fast charging can accelerate degradation. So they assume any faster charger at home is also bad for the pack. But AC home charging is limited by the onboard charger and by what the manufacturers consider safe for daily use. When you charge at 7 or 11 kilowatts at home, you're still far below the brutal C rates you see at the fast chargers. From the point of view of the cells, the difference between 3.6 and 7 kW at home is not in the same league as hammering the pack at 100 or 200 kW DC. So what actually matters for pack's life at home? High average state of charge, heat, and time. If you keep the car at 100% overnight every night, especially in the hot weather, that will hurt the pack more than choosing 7 kW instead of 5. If your garage is hot and the pack never gets too cool properly, that adds stress. So the smart play is simple. Use enough power to refill comfortably overnight.
Set your daily charge limit below 100%, maybe 70 or 80 for normal use unless you need a full pack the next day. Let the car manage the rest. The shocking truth is that your habits are more important than your hardware. Let us talk about the cost because that is where many people get surprised. Home charging is usually sold with one line. It is cheaper than gas. That is often true, but the spread can be bigger or smaller depending on your local rates and how you charge. If you plug in every night and charge in peak overnight hours, your cost per kilowatt hour might be high enough that public of peak chargers or special EV tariffs would have been cheaper. If your utility offers a nighttime discount and you never use it, because you didn't bother with scheduling, you're leaving money on the table every month. The charger isn't what make it cheaper. Your ability to aim charging into the cheap hours is what does it. A lot of people could save quite a bit each year by simply shifting most of their charging two or three hours later than they do now. No new hardware required. The shocking truth is that most of the financial advantage of home charging comes from timing and planning, not from buying the biggest, fanciest box. So let us step back. You are probably told you must get a big smart charger or your EV life will be pain. Now you know, the wall box is just a controlled power gate. Your car is the real charger. Your electrical panel is the true bottleneck. Your daily kilometers driven and your charging routine decides how much power you actually need. The shock is not that home chargers are a scam. They're not. The shock is that many people spend money solving the wrong problem. They argue about 11 versus 7 while never using off-peak rates. They obsess about smart features by leaving the app untouched. They worry about battery wear from AC charging while parking at 100% every night. Once you flip the script and look at it like an engineer, the path is simple. Figure out how much energy you really use on a normal day. Make sure your panel and wiring can safely supply that overnight. Pick a reliable charger that meets that need instead of chasing the biggest number on the spec sheet. Use schedules and simple habits to keep your pack in a healthy state of charge for most of the time. If you do that, your home charger becomes boring, predictable, and cheap to run. Which is exactly what if you want to go, If you want to go deeper into how charging habits affect your battery life and real-world range, click on the BMS course in the description. Thank you.